Thanks for joining us. On the line right now is Dr. Dave Janda from DaveJanda.com. And today, Dave, I'd like to talk with you a little bit about Obamacare on Obamacare. You just posted something the other day from CNBC, which was a piece in which an experienced hacker named David Kennedy said no security was ever built into the Obamacare website. And he says, quote, it's hard to go back and fix the security issues because security was never built into it. Obamacare is really the Titanic at this point, isn't it, Dave? Oh, absolutely, Sean. It shouldn't be surprising. I'm a a practicing orthopedic surgeon. I have been for the past 25 years. In addition to my work in the front line of healthcare delivery of patients on a daily basis. I run a research institute that focuses on healthcare cost containment, and I've been involved in healthcare policy since 1988. So I have a track record with healthcare policy, track record of taking care of folks. I think that's important for your listeners to know, and, and because, you know, I think a lot of folks that we see in the media talking about the good or the bad of Obamacare, they really don't have any functional medical knowledge. And unfortunately, those of us on the front line of healthcare delivery are against Obamacare. And the critics of us, the supporters, if you will, of Obamacare, say the reason why we're against Obamacare is because we are racist. I'm not a racist. I don't know if anyone that's opposed to Obamacare that's a racist. We're realists. And the reality of the situation is the Obamacare will not create more affordable, more available, or more quality-oriented health care. In fact, it'll do the opposite. It's going to make health care less available, more expensive, and less quality-oriented. That's Those are the facts. And the reason why I can say that is because I've read Obamacare several times, as opposed to, and I'm not even sure, that Barack Obama has read Obamacare based on the stuff that comes out of his mouth because he is so factually incorrect about the things he says, whether it's the, you're not going to lose your insurance when you sign up for Obamacare, when in fact, if you read Obamacare, it becomes very obvious that anyone and everyone who signs up for Obamacare will in fact lose their health care coverage in some manner. It becomes very frustrating because The heart, the soul, and the core of Obamacare is based on something I fought against my entire career, against insurance companies and HMOs. And that's the most unethical and inhumane means of cutting health care costs, and that's the rationing and denying of care. That's the most unethical means, Sean, of cutting health care costs. And that's what Obamacare is all about. Now, many people say, well, why do you believe that? Because I've read Obamacare, both Parts, Sean. And when folks say both parts, what are you talking about? The health care bill was passed in March of 2010. Right. That was the second part of Obamacare. But the first part of Obamacare was, was hidden, hidden, upward word, hidden, hidden in the stimulus bill in February of 2009. Buried deep within the stimulus bill. And I was one of the first folks to figure this out because I read it and started talking about it, which got me in trouble with the administration and many folks that are Obama supporters saying, oh, you're making this stuff up. Wasn't making it up. It was in black and white in the Obamacare, about 500 pages into the stimulus bill. And in the stimulus bill, it created, well, they're, they're death panels. It is in Obamacare, but the main death panels, the rationing boards, that's the other word for death panels, the rationing boards were actually hidden in the stimulus bill. About 500 pages deep in the stimulus bill, Sean, there was a portion where it talked about health care, and it talked about the creation of an organization called the Federal Coordinating Council for comparative effectiveness research. That's a rationing board. That's a death panel. How do you know that? Because of the words in the title, comparative effectiveness, Sean. This is something that I fought against in the mid-90s in Hillary Care. Because Hillary Care, just as Obamacare, was based on the British medical system model of rationing care. And in the British system, they created something called comparative effectiveness. Comparative effectiveness, Sean, the definition of it is the approval or rejection of a treatment or test based on two things. The cost of that treatment or test divided by the number of years the patient will benefit. That is a rationing formula. That is directly out of the British healthcare model. That was in Hillary Care. That's why I fought against Hillary Care and we were able to defeat it. This rationing board was also created in Obamacare. Not in the healthcare bill, Sean, but in the stimulus bill. 
And it went further in the stimulus bill. They created a second office called the National Coordinator's Office for Health Information Technology. When you go further in the stimulus bill, it says that this National Coordinator's Office, direct quote, Sean, from the stimulus bill, quote, quote, guide medical decisions at the time and place of care, end quote. It went on to say that this coordinator will be responsible for monitoring treatments to ensure providers, doctors, nurses, therapists, and hospitals are following government protocols. Hospitals and providers that are not, quote, meaningful users of the new system will face penalties, end quote, and the Secretary of Health and Human Services can impose, quote, more stringent measures of meaningful use over time, end quote. So what does all this mean, Sean? In July of 2009, I was contacted by members of Congress who asked me to come and speak and be the, the keynote speaker at a congressional dinner in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And I presented this information about Obamacare that was hidden in the stimulus bill. This might not be surprising to you or your listeners, but in the room were dozens and dozens of congressmen and dozens and dozens of their staff members. When I presented this information that, it, that this stuff was hidden in the stimulus bill, Sean, I would say all but two of these congressmen started looking around the room, looking at each other like, we passed this? This was in the stimulus bill? There were only two that I could see that were like, yeah, not in their head, like, yeah, yeah, we know it was in there. So when I asked these congressmen, I said, look, Obamacare is already halfway implemented. Now, remember, this is in July of 2009. The stimulus bill passed in February 2009, and the health care bill didn't pass till March of 2010. I said, listen, tell me what this means, what this national coordinator, this guide medical decisions, the time and place and care, and the fact that you're going to face penalties. And I go, what does this mean? Here's what's going to happen. When a doc walks into a room with their nurse, They'll examine the patient. They'll come up with a diagnosis. They'll, they'll have a code associated with that diagnosis. You'll type that code in a little iPad or hot handheld device, and it's going to go to the National Coordinator's Office. The National Coordinator's Office is going to take the protocol that was developed through this Federal Coordinating Council for Comparative Effectiveness Research, this rationing board. And by the way, how many folks on that board actually take care of patients? Uh, there are a couple MDs but there are very few, and the MDs that are on that board that Obama appointed one week after the stimulus bill was passed into law, I'm not sure they've ever taken care of a patient. So these essentially bureaucrats that have no functional medical knowledge are going to create these protocols that are going to be based on rationing, and what they're going to do is they're going to hand this over to the coordinator. So we send the electronic message to and code to the coordinator's office come January 1st, 2015, and what's going to come back, Sean, is a protocol of how to take care of that patient, A, B, and C, a protocol that's been devised by people that have no functional medical knowledge, that are thousands of miles away and have no knowledge about that patient other than a code. This is cookbook medicine, and I'm telling you, after being involved in medicine for 30 years, when you start practicing medicine from a cookbook, people get hurt and people die. Okay. Violation of the Hippocratic Oath that we all take of doing no harm. It is the absolute harm, John. So what's going to happen, Sean, is we're going to get this code. And let's say we I look at the code and I go, well, I've been doing this 30 years. I disagree with this protocol. I'm going to do what's right for the patient, and I'm not going to follow the protocol. I'm now violating the protocol. And according to the stimulus bill, if I violate that protocol, I'm going to face penalties. And if I continue to do it, the more, quote, stringent measures are going to be applied to me. So I said to these congressmen in the room, okay, January 1st, 2013, 2014, 2015, whenever this kicks in with the penalty phase, I go against the protocol because I'm going to do what's right for my patient. I'm not going to do what some bureaucrat who's no medical knowledge is telling me to do. I'm going to violate the protocol and do what's right for that patient. What's the penalty I'm going to face? Are you telling me I'm going to be fined 100 bucks when I get paid 20 bucks to see that patient? Congressman stands up and goes, no, Dr. Janda, your first offense, you could be fined up to $100,000. Sean, I started laughing. Nobody else in the room was laughing. And I, and I said, okay, well, let's say I win the lottery, and I say, fine, I'm going to give you that 100 grand. I go, the next patient that comes in, and I violate the protocol a second time, it says more stringent measures are going to be utilized. What does that mean? Another congressman stands up, and he looks at me, and goes, Dr. Janda, on a second offense, uh, and it's going to be an arbitrary nature based on the Secretary of Health and Human Services, and if you don't donate to the right organization or the right political party, second offense, you could well go to jail. 
I started laughing, Sean. Nobody else in the room was laughing. A congressman stands up at the end when we're in the question and answer session. He goes, Dr. Jan, I'm going to be doing some Sunday morning TV shows, you know, one of some of the big ones. And if they ask me what's the one word to describe Obamacare, what do I say? And I'm thinking malignant, cancer is devastating. And then it comes to me, fascism. And when I looked at this congressman, I said, I hate to say this. Here we are in the Capitol building, supposedly the mecca of freedom, the rotunda is, you know, 200 feet away. I go, if, I, if somebody asks me what's the one word, I go, after you have told me that I could be fined 100 grand after doing what's right for my patient or go to jail on a second offense if we're taking care of my patient the right way, the one word to describe Obamacare is fascist. Well, Dave, let me ask you this. When you say that they snuck this in in a stimulus, they love to sneak this stuff in. It's, like, it's backdoor totalitarianism because by the time the citizens realize what's going on, it's too late. It's already law. And, you know, what's the definition of, of tyranny? Really, at the end of the day, it's when the government can enforce laws on the citizenry that the government itself, the government officials and politicians themselves don't obey. And we see that with Obamacare. Harry Reid just exempted his staff last week from having to sign up for Obamacare. And, you know, it gets me back to this idea of no security ever being built back into this, being built into this Obamacare site. Let me play this clip for you and listen to uh, this exchange with David Kennedy and uh, the folks there at CNBC. Listen to this. But what, what would you tell people in the meantime? Don't even go to the mm -hmm. website? Don't access it because you're putting yourself at risk by doing that? Yeah, putting your information on there is definitely a risk. And, and since it's on the federal level, uh, they don't have to disclose that there's any type of breach. So if your information gets compromised, what do you, you mean? You do not. You don't have to get notified that if your if your information is actually compromised. So if, if healthcare.gov gets hacked and all of the information is taken out of it, you're not. Uh, the government's not liable to actually disclose that that information's um, been taken or um, compromised. So you basically have to monitor your own credit. Did you hear that, David? I did. Well, I can tell you, starting three weeks ago, it reached it, it reached panic phase in my patients. And people have been coming in the office absolutely panicked. I believe Obamacare is like a bomb. You see, I believe Obamacare was developed. It was constructed by the New World Order Group, the Tides Foundation, the Apollo Alliance, the insurance industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the AMA. These are all entities that are bought and paid for by the New World Order global elite crowd. Obamacare was created to be a bomb, a bomb that destroys the healthcare delivery system. The plan was for the a bomb to go off at a point in time, later than right now actually, but later down the line, it implodes, and as it implodes and explodes, people throw their hands up and go, oh my gosh, this is horrible, the healthcare delivery system's in trouble, I can't get care, and the, and the plan was for people to run to the government and say, government, save me, and the government will have flipped a switch to jump into a single player plan. Now here's the problem. The plan was for the Obamacare to explode, to implode like a bomb, but not yet. Once we get people involved through the website and signed up, then we're going to blow it up. They never counted on these people being incompetent where they couldn't even set up a website. So what happened is they were focusing all their efforts, on the Obama administration, of blowing up health care delivery once people got in the system. What happened is people haven't been able to get into the system because, because of their own greed and because of the old incompetence of folks they gave to set up the website, it blew up in their hands. It blew up in the bomb maker's hands. And that's what we're looking at right now. Let me tell you, Sean, I think there's one solution to Obamacare. And, that, and here it is. It has to be immediately repealed. This stuff where the president comes out by decree and goes, this law exists and this one doesn't, this part of the law is going to be implemented and this isn't. No, as you mentioned, that's, that's the definition of totalitarianism, of a tyranny of fascism. So what has to happen for anybody to make any determination of insurance companies can still uh, per, uh, have people involved in the current plans they currently have, that can't come from a decree from the president or the dictator at large. It has to come from a repeal of the law itself. Here's what every one of your listeners, of everyone who goes to your site, of everyone who goes to my site, anyone who goes to zero, you name it, what they have to do. The only way we can beat these totalitarian, and let's call them what they are, scum, is by every one of your listeners to get on the phone and call the representatives in the House and in the Senate in Washington and in the House and the Senate of each and every one of their states. Because let me tell you something, the states have control over how Obamacare or if it's implemented. And they need to say the following. 
You need to stop and repeal Obamacare immediately. And if you do not, I will not only not vote for you the next time, I am going to actively pursue you being removed in a recall movement immediately. These folks will melt like the wicked witch.